cloud support engineer here at the AWS headquarters in Seattle. Sometimes customers ask me what the difference is between a single NLB versus multiple NLBs with an endpoint service. So, in this video, I'll show you the difference between single versus multiple NLBs with an endpoint service with the help of examples. I'll also go through the recommended best practices while using multiple NLBs with an endpoint service. Let's get started. Let us first see the case when we have a single NLB with an endpoint service. You can host your application on multiple instances and then load balance the requests to them using Network Load Balancer. The application can be configured as an endpoint service. Let's say that you have enabled two availability zones on the NLB, AZA and AZB. In the diagram, I have used different colors for the two AZs. The NLB will have one elastic network interface in each of the enabled AZs. Other AWS principles can create a connection from their VPC to your endpoint service using an interface VPC endpoint. Let's say that there are three endpoint consumers connecting to the endpoint service. Consumer 1 has enabled only AZA, so there is one endpoint interface in AZA. Consumer 2 has enabled only AZB, so there is one endpoint interface in AZB. Consumer 3 has enabled both AZs and thus has an endpoint interface in both AZA and AZB. When consumer 1 connects to the service using its endpoint interface in AZA, it connects to the NLB's interface in AZA. When consumer 2 connects to the service using its endpoint interface in AZB, it connects to the NLB's interface in AZB. Depending on the AZ, from where the connection is initiated for the endpoint interface for consumer 3, it can connect to either of the NLB's interface. If a connection is initiated from the interface in AZA, it connects to the NLB's elastic network interface in AZA. And if a connection is initiated from an interface in AZB, it will connect to the NLB's elastic network interface in AZB. Now let's see the case where we have multiple NLBs with the endpoint service. Let's say you associated two NLBs with the endpoint service, NLB1 and NLB2. Each NLB has both the AZs enabled and therefore has one elastic network interface in each of the enabled AZ. Similar to the previous example, there are three endpoint consumers connecting to the endpoint service. Consumer 1 has enabled only AZA, so there is one endpoint interface in AZA. Consumer 2 has enabled only AZB, so there is one endpoint interface in AZB. Consumer 3 has enabled both AZs and thus has an endpoint interface in both AZA and AZB. When consumer 1 connects to the service using its endpoint interface in AZA, it connects to either NLB1's or NLB2's elastic network interface in AZA. When consumer 2 connects to the service using its endpoint interface in AZB, it connects to either NLB1's or NLB2's elastic network interface in AZB. Depending upon the AZ from where the connection is initiated for the endpoint interface for consumer 3, it can either connect to NLB1 or NLB2 in AZA or AZB. For example, if the connection is initiated from an endpoint interface in AZA, it can connect to elastic network interface of NLB1 or NLB2 in AZA. Similarly, endpoint interface in AZB can connect to elastic network interface of either of the NLBs in AZB. Please note that an endpoint interface in an AZ connects to only one NLB. For example, the endpoint interface of consumer 1 in AZA is associated with either NLB1 or NLB2 in AZA. If a connection initiated from the endpoint interface of consumer 1 connects to NLB1 in AZA, for all the subsequent connections, it will always connect to NLB1. Also, the selection of an NLB for an endpoint interface is random. Therefore, if consumer 1 was associated with NLB1 for AZA, consumer 3 can be associated with either NLB1 or NLB2 in AZA. Now let's move on to a demonstration in which we will see that with multiple NLBs associated with an endpoint service, for a particular AZ, an endpoint interface will connect to only one NLB. As you can see, I've already logged into my AWS Management Console. Now I will go to the EC2 console 
On the left hand side, I will go to the load balancers that I have in my account. As you can see, I have two NLBs, NLB1 and NLB2. NLB1 has a listener on port 80 and NLB2 has a listener on port 8080. Both the NLBs have AZA and B enabled. Now we'll move to the VPC console. On the left side, I'll click on the endpoints. As you can see, I have an endpoint interface with AZA enabled. Now let's move over to the terminal where I will be testing the connectivity to the endpoint service from an instance in the same VPC as that of the endpoint interface. I will be using netcat command to test the connectivity. As you can see, I've already logged into the instance. Now let's see what happens if I connect to the endpoint interface in AZA on port 80. So now I will go ahead and paste the netcat command. The output shows that we were able to connect on port 80, that is we are able to connect to the NLB1 with listener on port 80. Now I will try to connect on port 8080 using the same endpoint interface. I will paste the netcat command to connect on port 8080. As you can see, we are not able to connect on port 8080. This is because the endpoint interface will only be able to connect to a single NLB. In this case, it connected to NLB1. Therefore, it is important that you have the same configuration for all the NLBs to provide a homogeneous service to all the endpoint consumers. For example, in my setup, the best practice would be to have the same listener and the target group configuration for both NLB1 and NLB2. That is, have two listeners and two target groups, one for port 80 and the other for port 8080 on both the NLBs. So now we've seen how an endpoint service behaves differently with multiple NLBs as compared to with a single NLB. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.